Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit six, lesson two, plotting data. Problem number one, in hockey, a player gets credited with a point in their statistics when they get an assist or goal. The table shows the number of assists and the number of points for 15 hockey players after a season. Make a scatter plot of this data. Make sure to scale and label the axes. Here you can see the scatter plot. The horizontal axis represents the assists, and the vertical axis represents the points awarded. Both the assists and the points are displayed in five unit increments. I'll quickly match each set of data with its matching point. 22 assists, 28 points. 16 assists, 18 points. 46 and 72. 19 and 29, 13 and 26, 9 and 13, 16 and 22, 8 and 18, 12 and 13, 12 and 17, 37 and 50, 7 and 12, 17 and 34, 27 and 58, 18 and 34. Problem number two, select all the representations that are appropriate for comparing bite strength to weight for different carnivores. First, let's just take a quick look at examples of each of these types of representations of data. A, a histogram. B, scatter plot. C, dot plot. D, table, E, box plot. The two types of representation that I choose are scatter plot and table. I especially like the table because it's easy to read. Problem number three, when is it better to use a table? I find it better to use a table when you wanna see precise information. And the second question for problem number three is, when is it better to use a scatter plot? I like to use scatter plots when I'm looking to see if there's a pattern or maybe if there's no pattern. So let's look at this scatter plot. You can see that there's kind of a pattern. The dots are hovering along that line. They're very close to that line and that shows a pattern. Problem number four from eighth grade unit five lesson 17. There are many cylinders with radius six meters. Let H represent the height in meters and V represent the volume in cubic meters. A, write an equation that represents the volume V as a function of the height H. The volume as a function of the height. That means that V, the volume, depends on the height of the cylinder. The volume of the cylinder depends on the height of the cylinder times pi times the radius of the cylinder squared. For this problem, the radius is six meters, so we can substitute the R with a six. And six squared is six times six, or 36. So the equation becomes V equals 36 times pi times the height. B, sketch the graph of the function using 3.14 as an approximation for pi. If the height of the cylinder were zero meters, then the volume would be zero meters cubed and we can show that point on the graph. If the height of the cylinder were one meter, then the volume would be 113 and four hundredths meters cubed. Because 3.14 times 36 times one is 113.04. I'll show that point on the graph as well. If we doubled the height of the cylinder from one meter to two meters, then the volume would also double, making the volume 226 and 8 hundredths meters cubed. Because 3.14 times 36 times 2 equals 226.08. And I'll also show that point on the graph. Let's make one more example, and this time the height will be 5 meters. Pi, or 3.14 times 36 times 5. Since 36 times 5 is 180, we have 180 times pi meters cubed. 180 times 3.14 
is 565 and 2 tenths. So the volume of this cylinder would be approximately 565 and 2 tenths meters cubed. Here are the points on the graph. With a height of zero, the volume is zero. With the height of one meter, the volume is 113 meters cubed. Double that height and your volume doubles. So a height of two meters brings a volume of approximately 226 meters cubed. You'll notice that this is making a straight line. The relationship between the height of a cylinder and the volume of the cylinder is proportional. For the last point, the height of 5 meters is 5 times greater than the height of 1 meter. And its volume is also 5 times greater. C. If you double the height of a cylinder, what happens to the volume? Explain this using the equation. In these examples, the cylinder on the left has a height of 5 meters and the cylinder on the right is doubled. It has a height of 10 meters. So essentially, we're just substituting the value for h either with a 5 or with a 10. And in doing so, the volume also doubles. D. If you multiply the height of a cylinder by one third, what happens to the volume? Explain this using the graph. Multiplying by one third is the same thing as dividing by three. So you'd actually be making the height three times smaller, which means you'd be making the volume three times smaller. Let's use this graph as an example. You can see that there's a point that represents a cylinder that has a height of 12 meters, and there's a point that represents the volume of a cylinder that has a height of four meters. And of course, four is three times smaller than 12, and the volume of that cylinder is three times smaller than the taller cylinder. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.